to another episode of DJ and Dad's podcast with your co-host and host Kyle Wilson and Chris Coffee. What's going on, my my amigo? What what's up, man? Feeling good, man. I, I was sick like all last week. Uh, kind of recovered like Saturday, Sunday. So I've been really just playing catch up with everything. And uh, Sunday was a really relaxed day. My my kids and my wife went out of town to go see her grandma. So I was able to catch up on a lot of stuff, including on stuff that we're about to talk about in this episode with the uh, dot swoosh and the Fortnite. So uh, yeah, just feeling good, man. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I am getting a little feedback there. I don't know. Oh, you can go ahead and mute your Twitter mic then if it is being pumped through mine. All right, cool. Well, if I'm being pumped through, then we should be golden. We should be Gucci. Uh, but anyways, that's awesome, man. Get it, always got to visit family, take care of the family. I went to the Creek Nation Festival out in, uh, you know, the tribal headquarters, which is, you know, Native American tribe. Uh, it's like one of the five civilized tribes. Got to see one of the celebrities from a TV show. Uh, called Yellowstone, so that was really cool. My wife actually got to take a picture uh, uh, with him. Is that the TV show that streamed on uh, Peacock? Yeah, yeah, Peacock, okay. and uh, I think it's even on like a few other streaming apps as well. But um, that was really cool. You know, that he actually showed out. Um, it's actually Mo, the the bodyguard in the show for for the chief, and, or the chairman as they call him in the in the show, but. Uh, I don't know. It was really cool because you get to see Native Americans actually come out to real Native American events and uh, celebrate and be a part of the culture. So it's it's always fun to see that. Cool, man. Cool. What, when yeah. was that? Was it yesterday or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we went out Friday and then my wife went out, I think, again, Saturday. So um, and my mom set up at the actual event and she was set up as a, as a vendor there. So it was kind of cool. cool. That's really cool, man. I saw either Friday or Saturday, you posted on Twitter, you're like cleaning some boxing gloves. Are you like getting back into boxing or are you just, re <laughs> you just retiring a pair of gloves? Hush, 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 hush. That's how it, that's what I say when I, when yeah. I box. Um, no, I, um, I've got a punching bag for my garage just to get in shape. Um, I've always been real big into like boxing, Muay Thai, MMA, and kickboxing and jujitsu so just really all the martial arts and sports just to stay active and fit i, I have competed in jujitsu tournaments and was pretty ins unsuccessful with my first one um but I, I i just like to stay in shape that's that's my main goal i don't want to you know go in and and fight anybody and mess yeah. my beautiful mug up you know what i mean yeah it makes sense man <laughs> So with with all your your fighting expertise, you know, I, I know last week there was some drama on Twitter with a possibility of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg doing a cage match. Who would you have your money on? Oh man, um, I, you know, I, I love Elon, but man, um, Mark Zuckerberg's been on it. He's been doing jujitsu. Um, jujitsu is incredible for getting in shape. I mean, it's literally an entire full body workout. So you're not only using your mind, but you're using your entire body um, because there's always these, there's like a billion different moves in jujitsu to like, you know, the end goal is to either submit somebody a limb or, you know, obviously choke them out. And so it's extremely like thought intense, but also obviously you're in you're involving your entire body. So for that reason, like I have to go, I have to air to Zuckerberg because I've, I've okay. trained jujitsu and it's really intense. Like it's, it's a superior workout almost and than most like sports out there yeah zuckerberg just looks like one of those guys that like doesn't look athletic but will surprise you i, I don't know like you just look yeah. at him and he he doesn't well, he doesn't look like much but, so but. not only does he have a lot of money but he has a he has he has the time and, and he has the resources to get really great at jujitsu and that's very scary so like even you know, if, if I'm looking, if I'm a stranger on the street, like I'm not going to go up to Mark Zuckerberg anymore and mess with that guy because he could just by himself choke somebody out pretty quick. Like jujitsu is that like even the white belts can get pretty dangerous. Um, like I'm a white belt. I can submit a blue every once in a while. And, you know, if I'm lucky, maybe something else. But I mean, even a, a white belt off the street, I wouldn't mess with a jujitsu pr uh, practitioner. Uh, cause you'll get choked out so fast. I mean, you'll I get mean, put to sleep. His opponent could free up some time too, though. Elon Musk, you know, like yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he could take off for a couple of days and, and probably be just fine. But yeah, yeah Elon, really yeah, Elon better get in it, man. He, if I was him, I would immediately get in the gym and start training boxing immediately. 
Um, you know, jujitsu, boxing, completely different sports, um, different, you know, jujitsu will get you in shape. It's very good for self-defense, but boxing is a completely different animal as well. And a very intense training regimen. Uh, if, if anybody's ever actually trained boxing, it's, it's really intense as well. Yeah. Yeah, Those I are mean, like, that's my favorite. Those are my two favorite training, like conditioning, body conditioning programs. Yeah. I, I've never done either. Uh, I've just, I've like wrestled and I've fought <laughs> and that, and just doing that is like very tiring. Like I don't, unless you've actually like fought somebody, whether that be like street fight or boxing or whatever, you don't realize how tiring that is on the body. I mean, you look at it and you're like, I could do that. Why, why is it, why are they like in like, I don't even know what they're called in boxing. Why, why are they in the third round and like hugging each other, you know, like leaning on each other, but like, dude, you get like worn out fast. Yeah. Like, just a few I, rounds. Yeah. I was in just the a best. couple of rounds. I was in the best shape of my life when I would get in fights and I was like exhausted after like a minute, <laughs> like it felt yeah. like, you know, like, like a couple of hits and a couple of like, you know, uh, wrestling positions. And I'm just like, bro, I don't even care. If I get hit now. I'm, I'm so yeah. tired. I just want to sleep. <laughs> I trained. Yeah. I trained so hard for a exhibition fight for boxing. Um, and I was get, like, the rounds weren't even that long. They're, they weren't traditional boxing rounds. They were just three rounds for like 30 to I can't remember if it was 60 seconds, but it was very short um, compared to like a two, three minute round in boxing or whatever it is. And I was gassed at the end of the fight. Gassed. Like I was like, this is just an exhibition. I like oh, actual real boxing fight. These guys are in shape. Like oh, it's dude, crazy, yeah. man. So moving on to our main topic with the dot solution Fortnite. as i told you i had a little bit of time this weekend to finally like catch up on things so like up until this weekend i haven't even like linked my account yet so uh, uh -oh. if, you're, if you're not aware i don't know when you're getting this out hopefully you'll get this out before it goes live but you have like 24 hours still to be able to link your dot solution your nike account so that's step one is linking the accounts uh, i actually have a question for you because you've been more on top of this than i have on step two so i actually played through air air for la bobobia uh whatever, <laughs> whatever it's called uh as a really cool experience um you know like you're you don't bring any guns you just kind of like do this like walkthrough style thing or whatever um i played through it a really good time but on the dot Seuss twitter it says that you need to buy the pack so i need i need you to clear this up for me kyle am i gonna make it because i didn't buy the pack but i still completed it and got all the grills or am i not gonna make it because i didn't buy the pack I'm hearing and reading yeah. both both things. Yeah, so the directions say you need to at least link your account to get the first achievement. So there's just a couple achievements, like obvious, or I think there's actually maybe three total. Um, the article is really not clear, even on the their actual directions on Epic Games. But you definitely want to link your account. I believe that's one achievement. The second one is obviously going through the uh, their the Nike Air Foria, you know, Air Max City or whatever, completing all those achievements. That's a second one. And then buying the the whole pack um, on, you know, Epic Games or Fortnite, rather, then I believe that's another thing. So they don't really say clearly um, on the directions, but it does say like you can go through and what you get for. I think there's a, probably a total of three. Um, I'd have to like reread everything, okay. but I think that's kind of the nutshell. Did you buy the pack? Yeah, I bought the pack, did the okay. completed the little city thing and then con already I connected my account first before I did all that. Some, now, some people are reporting they already see the achievements in there. Like, I haven't seen anything. Not until August 8th, I read. Yeah, so, so I haven't seen anything in my account. But I've I've heard reports of people saying that, but I don't know if that's true. Airphoria. So not airphobia. We're not scared of the air. We're like, <laughs> you, we're, we're euphoric in the air. It was very yeah, euphoric. We're, we're high on the air. We're high on life. But high, we're is, not high is a very good word. Scared man. of the air. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if, if you play through it, like uh, it doesn't matter if you've never been high in your life, you now you, you now experience being high because it's pretty a high very, on Nikes. A very, very trippy experience uh, going through that air for you. And I really enjoyed it. I give it a solid seven out of ten. Yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah, seven <laughs> out of ten. Pretty. It was pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. And it got me back into playing Fortnite a little bit, Bought bought a couple yeah. of skins like played a few games, played a few rounds, getting back in the swing of things a little bit, play second place a few times. So yeah, nice. it, was, it was a win for Epic Games. That's for sure.
Yeah, absolutely. I only played one. Oh, dude, speaking of Epic Games, I don't know if you saw last week. I I, I know you've been on top of like Immutable X like since the beginning. Um, Gods Unchained is officially available on Epic Games, which is pretty cool. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this, you're not familiar. Gods Unchained is like a very OG Immutable X game. It's like a card style game to where they like, come to life. Um, and it had a lot of transactions on Immutable X. It's actually live on Epic Games now. Nobody talked about that, man. Like, I don't know why. Uh, that's really big news, in my opinion. But see uh twitter was just involved in all the drama and petty stuff they choose to skip over the really substantial things like that yeah yeah i saw that um so epic games again adding more games to their roster you know you have immutable x um or i mean sorry gods unchained you have star atlas of uh, superior so that's like they're continuing to roll out more games on their marketplace which is pretty exciting to see um, obviously Epic Games really taking, trying to take a chunk out of Steam, um, Steam, the number one, like game launcher and marketplace pretty much, um, you know, them kind of going head to head there. So it'll see, it'll be interesting to see how that di dynamic plays out as more web three games keep launching. Um, and I kind of tweeted today, I was like, Hey, it's going to be like some adoption, like a little adoption at first, and then it's going to be all at once. And I still stand by that belief where that that's typically how we see an adoption anyways like the s curve it's like boom you know the hockey yeah. stick pattern now i think we'll, well, we'll and have you have you had the opportunity to play up only yet no nah, i didn't i didn't play that one i'm not like uh those aren't my genre i do appreciate those because they're fun to stream they're fun for like just they're just kind of fun if you're like really bored but i'm more of a like i have to be uh, I, I feel like I have ADD, so I feel like I always have to be doing something. And if if I'm just like running up, then to me that's not enough. I need to be like shooting, throwing a grenade, like swing, like so. That's why yeah. Fortnite's so fun to me. But I haven't played it yet. But I saw Doctor Disrespect was streaming it today. Yeah, he's streaming it today. Uh, it became one of the uh, most played games on Twitch, and the reason that's significant is I don't think it's like by Goblin Town. But it has something to do with Goblin Town. Like the whole premise is like you're escaping Goblin Town and you're going up to the sky or whatever. I guess endorsed by. Uh, do you know like the official whatever it is for it? Um, but it's cool because basically it points back to an NFT project, which is Goblin Town by Truth Labs, uh, which started off as a free mint. Nobody knew that Truth Labs was behind it. Then they came out and said that it was. They've done a lot of like really big surprises, but this being their biggest uh and talk about like a now like what will this do for goblin town you know like i don't think floor prices have really been affected by it um but if somehow some way like you get an achievement like maybe an nft for completing the game uh, i heard a lot of people talking about this it'd be the funniest thing because a lot of gamers don't care for nfts so it's almost like you're sending them something they don't want like you're sending them like a virus or something like that <laughs> so um I, but you know it's still something maybe they can sell it you know maybe they're like what the heck is this i don't want this oh it's worth 20 cents cool that's a quarter you know that's 20 cents i didn't have uh i don't know but i kind of want to beat it just to uh one participate in it but two maybe there will be some type of incentive from truth labs to beat it i i don't know but it, it's pretty cool that one of the most trending games right now is like alludes to an nft project yeah yeah, it's, it's good to see in the mainstream, you know, gamers playing it. Dr. Disrespect. Some some gamers don't even know, like, it's about Goblin Town or, like, it has the logo in it. So it is kind of cool, like, that gorilla type, type of marketing that you're seeing in the game. Um, again, I don't know if it ne necessarily pushes, like, the needle forward, but if they do launch something or if, they, if it does, like, create a lot of viral buzz, like, in the streaming community, I could see that being a, uh, something beneficial because, like... That's the main thing most people don't understand is like streamers are like celebrities in a sense. They like they literally have more people watching them than entire like tickets you can sell at like a an entire stadium. Like there's like Dr. Disrespect pulls in like 20, 30,000 people. I'm like, these guys are like big, yeah. like the big people. <laughs> They are, yeah, man, for sure. I just think expanding this IP is cool, like, in gaming. I, I was looking around the room because I actually, like, completely unrelated uh, project, but I got some, like, Pudgy from Pudgy Penguins. I got some of their Pudgy toys. I got some, like, plushes, and I got this one that, like, stands on my desk behind me and, like, holds up, like, signs. Um, and just, again, that NFT project expanding their IP by, like, creating these toys and these plushes. Like, it's really cool to see some projects really taking, like, massive initiative towards mass adoption. And it also just makes sense for, like, value propositions for me. Like, 
you know, if tr like a lot of true collectors, like if Pudgy Penguins just continues to expand and, and like it's huge, there will be certain collectors that want those very first like digital pieces. And that's a new IP. You know, that's not Disney. That's not um, whatever. Like that, like this is a brand new thing. So it's pretty impressive for them to be making strides like they are. Yeah. What game was that you said? Wasn't a game. Where'd you go, bro? Uh, sorry. I was, I was trying to see if the Twitter was still going, but. I think we, I think we, I think you turned it off. Oh, I ended that. Um, I ended that in the first thirty seconds. All right, sorry. I was, I was trying to find. I was like fumbling my phone just now, but, um, yeah. What were we, what were we talking about? Just a, a little refresh. Just. I'm talking about pudgy penguins. And oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I heard you say that. Uh, they're pudgy toys. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Also, I think also, they're offering something that fit, that uh, physical collections have never offered. They're actually offering if you film an unboxing experience. Um, I don't know exactly what they're giving you, but you could essentially get your money back for the purchase by filming that unboxing experience, which is a very interesting concept. It's a marketing technique, of course, but I think uh, Sappy Seals could have some potential to go mainstream as well. They have the cute, a cute similar PFP. Um, I'm really bullish on like little cute stuff because it's like it's something family friendly. Um, it's fun. It's collectible. It hits a younger demographic as well. I love what Pudgy did with their collection. You know, it wasn't too pricey. Like, uh, it can appeal to even, like, younger people. Um, it, it's just fun. It's fun, cute, cool to collect. I mean, it's positive. Um, kind of the direction Gary V went with his V friends. I don't know. I think it's cool. I, I, I love what I they're know. doing there. I don't know where my penguin went for some now, reason. Now, Zuki Beans, I don't know about oh, that. Is. I don't know about Zuki Beans, man. No, I unplugged my mic. Your, your camera on, looks back. like a, a, a pixel punk, by the way. I found it. So your camera looks like a, a crypto punk again. So we're going to wait on Chris to shill his penguin again. Well, I actually, actually can't find it, but I found the case for it. But so the idea is it. like this: this cute little penguin. You can't even he, see it because you look like a, a crypto punk. He holds up like little signs, and so this sign says "Keep going," so it's kind of cute. Oh, you, am I like? Yeah, you can't even read. Again? Like, yeah, it's it's so bad. Like you can you can't even see you can see your mustache, and that's about it. Sigh. You you look like a yeah a crypto punk. Maybe even worse. It's pretty bad. Mm. You want to put a pause real quick on the lot? I mean, being this is recorded. Um, I can record myself like I did last time and send that to you. Now nah, let's, just keep, let's just, just keep going. It would just, we're, it would we're, just we're start here. Yeah, we're already knee deep. Let's just keep going. Okay. But well, um, the sign says keep going. And that was my toy box. But I don't know where my penguin's at. So, yeah, I mean, what they're doing is really cool. I'm um, not really excited about the Zuki beans. I, I saw that one. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, man. I mean, the elements? Yeah, well, the Zuki. Are you talking about the elements? Yeah, it was revolving around, like, it's literally a picture of a bean with the elements going around it. Obviously, it's like the elementals, mm -hmm. but uh, they didn't include the beans at, at the same time. So, <laughs> I don't, it, it just seemed like, Everything they've done, I don't know why people get excited. It's just anime. Like somebody else is going to do an anime too, and maybe they might do it better. So for me, like I'm not that excited about Azuki. The founders are like a known rugger. Like I'm like, I I just don't get the like again. It's just anime to me. Like I don't know. I get why people are excited because yeah. it's anime, but I'm like that. It's not the only anime project in the space. Like I don't know. It's just me. People just made it, people just made a lot of money off of it, and they got the right influencers. Like there's actually some like pretty ethical, at least as of right now, known influencers that have like market for Zuki's. And I've seen that. Groups. Yeah, I've seen that. So they basically yeah. just got lucky. But I, I do agree. I'm I'm bearish on the elementals like majorly because like anytime a, we've seen NFT projects drop like this third collection, it's just always been bad for the prior collections. Uh, I think like two is like the the ideal. Like you have D gods and you have Utes. You have like uh, board apes and you have mutants. Which obviously there's like more of those. Uh, but like once you start getting into those thirds, like once gutter cats try to drop their third, once cat uh, cool cats, I did the reveal on here. Once they did the wolves, uh, there, there's so many like examples of like once you start drop doodles, once you start dropping like more than two collections, it just affects the floor price of everything else. And like I guess you can make the argument of like 
it's not up to the founders to keep your floor up or whatever. But like at the end of the day, if you just keep dropping collections, I just don't know how like that's going to go for your holders. Yeah, dude. I, I just got 14 new Epic Games friend requests. <laughs> oh my god! For gosh. what? Speaking of which, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But anyways, I, well, I did tweet about it the other day that I was playing, and then I did put my name out there. Uh, so maybe that's what it was. Uh, yeah, it's just the second collection thing is a tough deal. I mean, Neo Tokyo did it, but because their first collection was so limited and finite, so they did a second one, and that's it's around one ETH or so. I don't, I don't know. I don't check it every day. Um, but over time, it's growing into a stronger and stronger community. And you know, Becker always said like, this isn't about like the floor price this is about building long term and that's kind of just playing out it's just slowly gonna gain momentum uh, at one point it did flip board apes and i kind of wish i sold at that point um but we were we were kind of dumb and didn't so i got wrecked but it was a oh there's no we bro i would have floored it Becker was uh that's just that's just my perspective it was on it was we a free mint, but it was movies. a free mint and and you're know, um well just so the viewers know it's a free mint for me and and the uh, citizen actually yields bytes, like one byte per day or whatever. So, uh, or on a minimum. So you do get like these byte tokens. So those were really profitable, but yeah. But it, that's just like an example of a second collection kind of done well. I mean, sure. ish. Better yeah. than most. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think what I think Becker's going to build something cool. I just I don't align with him in any perspective at all. So <laughs> he's not my. I I wouldn't get. There was some points to where like because we his building looked so cool, I wanted to take part. But I just I disagree with him so much on worldview. I just don't know if I can contribute to his project. Yeah, yeah, he is one of those like you do have to take it with a grain of salt. He's like super blunt. Like doesn't he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He comes he can come off a, a certain way to people. And uh, so that is one thing, like if you don't align with that, he's like ex-military as well. So, yeah, that's that's definitely like his tweets are can be definitely uh, I don't know what the word is for that. Abrasive, I think yeah. maybe abrasive. Well, and for he can him be very having, abrasive. Yeah, I, I know what he means. But for him, like owning and running an NFT project and like everyone's while he'll just say something that's like. Like so bearish on like NFTs as a whole. And it's just kind of weird, like as a founder, to be like, "Yeah, NFTs are probably not going to be a thing next year." Like he didn't say that exactly, but like there'll be tweets that like kind of allude to that. I'm like, "Bro, you're running a project. Saying stuff like this probably isn't ideal for you to to send out. Like basically sending things like making everybody terrified um, mm -hmm. of like holding NFTs, which I guess he's just like trying to like promote caution and be real, especially with like US users. Um, but everyone saw him just like, "Bro, like you got holders yeah, that like trust you." <laughs> yeah, he makes uh he makes people think for sure. And so it is like on one side it can be abrasive, on the other it's like good perspective like in to some degree, you know. So I don't know, it is what it is, but uh what are some other good topics, man? Uh to me, I I do think in the next bull run we'll see web3 games uh do really well though, however. Cuz we I talked agree, about and I think uh... and chain on on Epic Games and I feel like you know with Dot Swoosh and Fortnite collabing, uh, Dot Swoosh they've even partnered with EA Games. That's like another big one. So it's like, what do they have in store for gamers on that? And so I don't know. There's like just yeah. so much culmination happening in the space, and um, it's hard to see this not being successful long run. Yeah, I really think that the next like 10x, 20x, 50x token is going to be one of these tokens tied to a game. And it's just going to be a matter of like, does this abide by our new security laws, you know, as far as like US goes. Uh, but besides that, like I totally see one of these games that's going to pop off having a token that's going to be that token. So yeah, like you said, like I'm bullish on Web3 Gaming in the next bull run more than I've ever been. Because I feel like last bull run, it's like everybody knew that like, nft gaming was going to be a thing but like we still weren't really there everybody was like promising games but like they didn't really mean it you know or like the there weren't like huge companies tied to games and like there's a couple of games out there like i mean you work for alluvium but a lot of it at the time was still like trailers and like what's to come and like teasers and some betas so like next run like i feel like we're going to be a little bit more tangible 
you know, we're, we're going to be a little bit closer to actually like getting some better, more gameplay, uh, kind of understanding how everything connects. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like we we're almost like too far out last run, but like next run, we're going to be close enough to where like, we're going to see it. We're going to see it matter. Yeah. So what's your thoughts? Um, I agree with that. And yeah, we'll see a lot more games, but I see you wearing a VV shirt. I know you're like a VV maxi. Um, what's your thoughts on VV in the next bull run? <laughs> Dang, dude. Just came out. It just came out of left field. And got me like that. Um, <laughs> so, as far as VB goes, um, I'm still like, I'm still bullish on the if if the ecosystem continues to flourish as far as like user growth in the next run, uh, adoption, collectors, experience, and if they really get with some of the stuff, um, I still am like as far as I don't I don't know which way to say. It. I'm more bullish on the Omi token than I am individual collectible prices. Uh, when it comes to individual collectibles, it I don't know a better way to say this than it just depends on what people not manipulate, but like choose to buy and hold. Like if you have a bunch of wells, like buy and hold Elsa, then yeah, next bull run Elsa is going to be worth whatever they set the, the price to. And there will probably be people that buy that. But I don't think that's going to be the case for 98% of the collectibles. You know, I, I think it's easy to point out the ones that it will be the case. And I think it's hard to say, well, what price will people allow the floor price to be? Because you have the same thing with Bored Apes. What's a Bored Ape worth? Like right now it's worth like, I it dipped actually like to 35 ETH, which is like a, the lowest it's been since November 2021. Uh, it's back up to like 45 ETH. Why is a board ape worth 45 ETH? Well, like obviously there's a Huga ecosystem. Um, there's they're building out their own metaverse, they're building out their own games, they have lots of airdrops to make people money, they have their own token. Okay, so there's a lot more value proposition there, obviously. But at the end of the day, people choose to hold a board ape over seventy thousand dollars, and they're not gonna let go for anything less than that. So you could technically argue the same for any said collectible, even if it doesn't offer the same proposition. So it's hard for me to say like there will be no collectibles that are over hundred hundred thousand dollars i don't know you know if people choose if, if you have doc, a couple dr profits choose that all buy this one collectible then yeah it could be worth that what how will volume be will it be like donnie's to where we like don't really see sales i don't know so i guess it's a long-winded long way of saying i'm still accumulating omi token i'm not necessarily like hardcore dca and collectibles because i don't know which collectibles those are going to be and i don't like to speculate too much so as far as vv goes I collect what I like to collect. I buy what I like to buy. And I still, I do think, think there's still like grails out there that I wouldn't mind holding for long term, but I'm not going to like place all my, like I'm not putting large bets on that just because the ecosystem is so massive, you know, like liquidity has so many different ways to go. I don't know what these people are going to choose to favor. Will it be Walt next run? I mean, you have right now, Walt's like one of the favored ones. I've never personally been my thing, um, but I don't know. Maybe we'll be. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Like same kind of thought, just like only so select pieces will be worth a lot. Um, and the rest of it, it's going to be like, you know, few and far in between. I mean, there's a lot of good, good FAs and things like that, but, um, you know, there could be a, maybe like the, the first Batman, like maybe Fortnite does, a Batman skin NFT randomly, maybe that's more, you know, maybe that's a valuable too. So there's a lot of dynamics that go into it. Um, I, I just think that, um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I think the select pieces will do really well is what I'm trying to say. I guess like I look at it, like I do card collecting, you know, you could open a bunch of packs, uh, and then you might land a grail and it's kind of like that. It's the same kind of dynamic, um, long run. Like all, a lot of these cards probably won't, be worth much if anything um but you could end up pulling a grail and those select grails are going to be worth a lot and that's kind of like v how vv is and operates even david you himself kind of compare i think he compared uh vv to like tops and cooling off the market and that's what card companies have done so it's kind of that similar dynamic um there's more at play there than meets the eye there's nuances like you said that there's whales there's a lot of things to think about in the market like liquidity getting pulled like about 50 billion different ways um but if you're a smart investor uh it's collectors at heart but we all know it's more like people like as collectors we like to invest into things like it's not like yeah this is just for this is just for sunshine and rainbows it's like no i do like this character i love this character 
but I also want to make a lot of money off this character. It's like yeah, that. It's a, it's a catch twenty two. It's not just like oh, I'm just collecting this. Like we do want to have like the rule of three, for example. You want to have three of these grails, one to flip, one to play with, and one to keep. So that's kind of like the the name of the game when it comes to collecting. So um, those are a lot of like dynamics to play play with. Yeah, that whole cooling off the market thing is. I just think that's dumb, bro. I'll go on record and say that's dumb. Like, yeah. The, the the primary basis of that argument was, well, our licensors feel like they're selling it for too cheap. Like, what? That happens with everything. That happens with cards. That happens with physical collectibles. Like, the licensors will sell it for 20. The market will value it at 500. That's that's what, what happens. Like, I don't know. That, uh, anyways, uh, what else is going on? <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, that, I mean, there's other collectible apps out there too. Um, I mean, yeah, I saw you're of, an ambassador for one now. Yeah. Cryptoys. So cryptoys, uh, hey, oh. link in the description, you know, pick one of those up and help support the channel and DJ and dad's podcast, maybe even too. Um, no, but uh, for real though, um, speaking of collectibles, you know, have you seen, uh, so wizards or what was it? Magic the Gathering, they're doing a, a crossover with Lord of the Rings, and there's a bounty on the one of one golden ring, the ring of power, obviously, uh, for two million dollars. I don't know if you saw that, but absolutely bananas. Yeah, I haven't seen that. That's crazy. I, I love cards, man. I so I've been thinking about getting into sports card collecting for a while. Um, you know, even before like the same time I got into VV, it's just I, I go to Walmart and like go to these places and collect local collectible shops, but um, just to look around, but the the new packs are pretty expensive nowadays. Like you can't just go buy a single pack for like five, five or six bucks anymore. It's like you got to buy these like big boosters for like, or these big packs for like 25 plus $30. And for me, I'm like, man, I don't know about that. Like, so yeah. I don't know. Dang, that's crazy. The $2 million thing. Though. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. I, I Go ahead. I, was, I haven't really collected cards in a long time. And like you said, it's so expensive now. And I don't really trust the card market. I don't know if it's like been proven, but I don't know if you saw like with the Pokemon cards, basically just yeah. like people that work in the factories were like taking all the good ones and essentially mm -hmm. like resorting all of them, which the blockchain actually does solve that to a large degree, mainly for the fact that we would notice way sooner. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I haven't really collected in a long time as far as cards go. Yeah, speaking of which, we got NFT cards right here behind us on the shelf. Yeah. Big, uh, big fan of what HR is doing. You know, I'd love to see them go into more brands um, or collects the, the actual company that like basically helped build that platform. Um, they do CSGO cards. They, those sold out in Target. I covered that like as those cards were like going live. They sold out like in a day. It was like wild. So um, in terms of like that, I, I'm, I'm actually shocked more Web3 projects don't do that. Like I'm like, I've seen Web3 games kind of try to do it, but I'm, I'm talking about like the Azukis, the the all the other like quote unquote blue chips, if you will. Um, even if like some some people don't even believe there's blue chips in, in the NFT space yet. But if there was, then I'm surprised they don't do that more often, like hybrid NFT oh. cards or trading cards in We're general. Just we're just arguing over words for the blue chip thing. Cause I, I think that people that don't like referring to them as blue chips are referring to like the way people use it in stocks to where it's like this reputable company that's been around for years. That's like a safe investment. So like technically that's not in NFTs, but like for sake of argument, when we say blue chips, we're just talking about some of the best projects in the space that have yeah. grown some type of, uh, whatever loyalty or some type of, uh, trust within the ecosystem or whatever. So, yeah, people just get offended over over words. It's it's a weird thing, you know. I studied, yeah, communi like whatever. I studied communication in college. So like I learned the difference between like denotation and connotation, which is like what a word originally means versus like what like it it means like in context. And people just like get so focused on that original definition as if words don't change over time, which is just silly. So yeah, I agree. TLDR, people are silly. Silly gooses. <laughs> um, dude, have you it's seen just weird hills to die on? All right, so I just started watching a new show. Let's get into the AI topics because I find this very interesting. Um, have yeah. you? All right, so before I ask you about like AI, there's a show on what I think it's on Peacock, but um, I think it's called like uh, I don't know. It's about a nun. I think it's called like Susan or Suzanne. Or, I, I don't know. 
but it's about this Susan. yeah it's about this nun that like goes and tries to like take out this ai it's actually hilarious it's pretty funny so so far i'm i only like completed episode one um uh, and it's basically about this like ai that like everybody has an earbud in and like listens to it and everybody like lives this like you or uh I guess not just what's the opposite of dystopian. It's like Uto utopian. Yeah. Utopian. So everybody's like in this utopian, like doing what they love. Um, so I found that very interesting. Do you think we'll get to a point with AI? Is it going to be now? I know we talk about this quite a bit, but I always want to get your take on it, like a fresh new take on it. Cause things, things happen in AI, you know, on a weekly basis. What's your thoughts on like a utopian AI? Will it get to a point where everybody's kind of listening in on an earbud or, whatever or do you think it'll be just like dystopian and like you know people will control it at the top like what's your thoughts how, how will this play out kyle i think the world <laughs> is designed for a dystopian ending not not just ending but like i don't no believe... hope for humanity or ai <laughs> i don't have hope for utopia um no, I don't. I, I think that everything that I think I think everything gets twisted for evil, and I think there will always be enough bad apples in the world to make it bad. And uh, I don't think the utopia will ever prevail, unfortunately. So I think there will be good things that come out of AI. We've already seen it, um, but I think it will still be controlled by the elite. And I think that there will still be a equal amount of like scary or like bad stuff come out. I've been watching a show. I watched the first episode of Black Mirror. Spoiler alert if you haven't watched it. Have you watched it yet, Kyle? Uh, no, Black Mirror, so the, new, that the newest, hasn't, season, the newest that, season. So I haven't watched Black Mirror at all. And so it hasn't like skewed my world thinking yet. So we'll, okay, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. It hasn't skewed mine either. It's just reaffirmed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to spoil. Are you okay if I spoil the first episode of the of the last season? For, of the, no, the no, season? we can't do that. What? We can't. No, because we have viewers out there that haven't seen it either, so I'm I don't want to. I'm, I'm giving like an alert right now, like, hey, skip over the next 30 seconds. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. Nah, no, no, because nah, oh. I haven't seen it. I want to see it, so I got to see it. Can you give generalities without like giving the whole plot away? Because I, I have to see it, and everybody was talking about the first episode already, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll give like very general. Uh, basically, like using it goes way more deep than this I actually haven't even finished it i'm like because i was gonna wait on my wife uh to be to finish the episode uh but basically it uses ai to use likeness like against people's will in, in, in a way and like it gets i actually haven't even seen how dark it gets with that but like let's say like i were to create a video game with like you as the main character you know, but it's not, it's like, it's somebody that looks, that's like dressed like you, that's dressed like Kyle Wilson, but it's not Kyle Wilson. And I'm actually using their likeness. So like, as long as they give me approval, you can't, you can't really do anything about it. Cause like, it's not, they're, they're not really you. They just look like you and they've given approval to their likeness. So I can do whatever I want with this character in this game. Even if it means like really dark stuff that reflects poorly on you, that even points back to you, you know, like. You know, maybe this person, this game, whose name just happens to be Kyle as well, is like a st YouTube streamer. You know, and he he okay, but likes that, Oklahoma City. That, so this is, I guess, so the show to me is like entertainment of like what could happen, but like that's to me as well. Like, sure, it, but that's a small instance that I could see like elites using. But at the same time, like, if you really think there's going to be a super intelligent like AGI or artificial general intelligence, then it begs a question. Now, here's my next question. Do you think it's going to be sentient one day? It just depends on what sentient is. I feel like... Um, like, think, feel thinks like for it itself, be... has its own emotions, yeah. and is like it's kind of like, you know, it, it knows it's self-aware. It's self-aware. Yeah. I think it will be, but to the extent of us. So, like, I do believe what we were created and that we have limitations within that creation to where, like, we can create new things, but we still point back to what created us. All right. I believe the same thing with AI. I believe it, I, I believe it will be sentient. I believe it will be able to think for itself, but within the realm of its creation. Yeah. So, like, within the realm of, like, what originally created it, which is us. Right. Uh, it's going to so know that, yeah. I, if that makes sense, I... I yeah, I know that. I know that's a little, little deep, but like, so yeah, it will be independent. It will be sentient. 
it will kind of be able to create new things, but it's still technically going to be like derivatives based off the new things that we once created. And I believe like pretty much everything is a derivative. Um, so like, like it's kind of hard to explain. It's, this it's is a big not argument, necessarily like derivatives, well. but it's iterations, right? So we're at like we're only at yeah, peak. Exactly. We're at peak, peak civilization right now because it's we've iterated until we got here. And I think AI will iterate until it gets to a certain place as well. But my thinking, yes. though, is like, yeah, like it would be scary. But I think if humans have the right correct inputs into AI and not make it like this whole political thing and make it like not this like nefarious thing, then I think we could maybe put have the right inputs into like the next super agi and i think that's only possible if the united states is kind of behind it now i know people will disagree there but really if you look around the world um there's just not a whole lot of other options out there to make a safe um artificial intelligence like what's super a super agi out there in my opinion i mean could you think of another place that could make i mean now if they make it like an open system um then i could see that like where you have free thinking developers like developing towards the higher goal of making a morally, you know, sound AGI or super intelligent AGI, then I could see that being good as well. Um, but again, usually these things are done within or around, you know, the U S it seems like most of the time, like you do have a, like a large influence from the U S in, in stuff like that in general anyways. There's a lot to think yeah, there. I don't know. I'm just I <laughs> I am I'm losing faith in in humanity more and more every single year. So I that's because you're in Web three. Uh, that's because you're you're like in the NFT space. No, yeah. It's, no, it's not, bro. I, I, I'm partially in Web three. But you see the rugs every, me, all the time, and then right? like just on my feed. I let, 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 let's let's take last week for instance. Like last week. We had a like four or five people on a submarine, obviously that got that wanted to tour the Titanic. Uh, it, it it combusted, okay? Yeah, obviously imploded, like you yeah. Saw, it imploded. You saw this all over media, but but here's my problem with this: they knew that it imploded like 48 hours before they ended the investigation. Like they absolutely detected the Navy detected the implosion, the spot that it was, and had it on sonar exactly where it imploded day or two before so why did media keep covering it they kept covering it because retention is monetization they knew that they would get views they knew that people would watch they knew that they could drag it out it's kind of like you you're you're waiting for this uh you're waiting for the main point of your video to get there so you kind of build up to it like here's the five reasons you should use chat gpt but all that last reason is like your best reason they were doing that but with people's lives so like I don't know, man. That's bearish to me. Like that that we're at a point where media drags out the truth when it evolves but, like people's lives. Like, but again, you're talking about humans. We're uh, like to to separate the two. I think super intelligent AGI is going to get way way. It's it's going to be way more advanced than that. And the reason why I say super is because when I think about quantum computing. Um, it can do processes that would take 40 to 400 years for a classic computer. It, they, it can do it in like 40 seconds, like a, an sure. advanced uh, formula, you know, formula. So in my opinion, I think, again, I think if you have morally sound people at the helm helping with these things, um, then it could be good. Typically, a lot of scientists um, are, or at least, great thinkers are typically like think like that um it's when you have interference from like nefarious parties or somebody trying to control it to to dominate or something like that that's where the human element comes in and that's the kind of the condition the human condition of trying to control things but usually that only comes from people you know at the government or you know other levels of society that so again, I wonder seek, to, if seek to control but so a big debate for I don't know if this is just like the macro humans or just like in maybe in my little bubble that I live in is like if we were born good or not. I wonder if AI is going to be having the same debate in like a hundred years. I think we, ago, if they were programmed good or if they just became bad. I think <laughs> I, I think human nature at its core is born good uh, because like when you're kids, you literally have to be taught to be kind of like quote unquote like 
taught to, to like to hate essentially like you're not like as a kid just like out of the box like you know i think most humans are just born good like i, I really do i think that you know when you look at children just play um you know i have two kids two daughters and you watch them just play and interact with other children it, it's very innocent i mean there's like obviously like kids can go and bite each other but it's usually because they don't know how to control their emotions which is completely separate from like their core nature of just like, you know, Hey, do you want to be friends? Like, you know, the sweet aspect of humans. And I think to me, that's something to protect, you know, long-term. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you're, you're basically saying, which I agree with you because a lot of people would say the opposite. People would say that you could look at kids and tell that we're not born good because of like disobedience or like you said, like biting or like uh, yelling at their, sister or whatever but you're saying which i do agree with this point um that that's just part of your emotions and like growing as a person and as a human being that's not necessarily being bad uh that's just trying to discover how to like control yourself so i do agree with that point so yeah, have you seen good, I, I, I don't know there's a movie and you might remember it but it was like these humans are on a spaceship just adults and they're they <laughs> they're on this like mission and they always had to take this like blue like pill or something i can't remember what it was if it was a solution or a pill and it made them basically robotic and um they stopped taking it like some person found out like if you stop taking it you're you you like everything is it's kind of like you're high because you can experience things like in a different way um and so like everybody stopped taking it and like what happened was like they had forgotten how to control their emotions because the blue pill took away their um, emotions, like literally took their emotions away. So they were just focused on the mission. But as soon as they stopped taking it, they had to relearn how to use their emotional, like their emotional muscles. And since none of them knew how to like, since like they were super young, they never used their emotions and they started like killing each other and like all this crazy stuff. I thought that was like crazy. It was like Lord of the flies. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't seen it. Sorry, something like huge just crawled on my foot. I don't know what it was. <laughs> That's what distracted oh, me. Oh gosh. But no, I haven't seen it. So on that, uh, I guess going back to like uh the AI stuff, like do you believe that they're going to have emotions? And uh I'll follow that up with like, are these going to be the same emotions that we experience? Um, are they gonna be like kind of programmed emotions? Like it's kind of like they think that they feel things, but they don't, but maybe because they think that they feel it, they actually feel it. Like <laughs> Yeah, I think I think at a low level, it'll think it feels emotions um, and it's like artificial, but uh, maybe it gets to a point, though, where it is like a super intelligent AGI and it does like have similar um, type of connections as like a human would. I, I, I think I really do think we'll get to that place just because like, again, quantum computers are like the way they operate is like it's just so much more complex and it has so much more processes than a normal computer. So I'm like, it's kind of like unlimited in, in, a, in a sense, like it can have unlimited calculations the way it works in, in quantum and in, in theory. Where, so where do you, where do you, where do emotions come from? Um, so mind, will, and emotions. So that's where like you need a soul. And so that's kind of what we're, and that, that's what I'm kind of insinuating is like at what point does this thing just have a soul <laughs> like so you do you believe humans have souls yeah absolutely okay so i think i think soul, uh yeah go ahead do you believe a soul can be created i mean it depends like who's to say like i don't i'm not like i'm not the big man upstairs i don't get i don't make these rules like you know what i mean yeah so this is where i think we would find a slight disagreement like i I believe I do believe as well. I believe humans have souls. That's kind of unexplainable. Um, I don't believe we can recreate a soul. And um, even like a quantum computer, I think that's just out of our realm of possibilities. Um, and I don't think I mean, obviously, there's like very natural ways to explain emotions. Like you said, like there's also mind and body. Um, there's like oh, yeah, you can souls are three parts. Ways. Like, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Three I study, parts, I study psychology mind, in college. So like right now, like a AI is showing a its own mind and a will. And then now it's just the third element of emotion. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. Like at some point it's just out of our hands. Yeah. Like that's what a lot of 
the the brightest minds in the world are kind of insinuating like at some point it's just going to be like it's just going to have its own like emotion or like its own thing like it's just going to be so more advanced than than humans ever w could be you know so it's interesting, interesting. yeah, yeah it, i mean i don't know i've never thought about that until, you, we, until you asked i mean i'm kind of stumped are, on that like i don't know like these are i don't i don't make any of these rules yeah. you know like like he said i'm i'm a believer like we were created and all that too and you know all that stuff but that's more of like a spiritual like thought and like debate if you will so not trying to get into that you know? yeah but it comes into this it does yeah it, it, but it, but it does come into it because because if it, it's it's trying to determine how human AI can be or like how like further than human and pretty much the only difference would be if you do believe in like spiritual matters like that there's a division there and then if you do believe in the soul that's a division there possibly because as far as like mind and and thoughts and creation it, it, I don't it all, to me it all ties together um which it's a weird and uncomfortable thing to talk about i feel like but i don't know it's just a very interesting thing because like i i do believe there will be at the very end of this argument i believe there will be limitations for ai um that will that they'll lack humanity and that's that's yeah. my position i believe other people i believe other people i think feel i think for a while and, it will be that way but like time time isn't linear like we think like we're humans are limited in the way we think in general um and there's like some good movies about that there's like i always look to movies because they, they always have like good stories behind them but it's like there's some truth in all the movies um there's one where like an alien comes to invade quote unquote but it really was the entire time was trying to teach humans a different language uh, because a human language was linear and so it taught them this like circular language that began to like literally program their minds to think differently and they were able to see different like timelines, like not in a linear sense, but in the like a spherical, like multi dimension sense. And it like was able to save humanity, like just by simple language. And but at first, the humans were like, they're here to invade us, like and freaking out, um, like humans normally do. But um, they figured out that's what the aliens are trying to do the whole time. But that that being said, um, I don't know where I was going with that. But that was a, uh, what, what were you saying just a minute ago? <laughs> well, another point that I would have going back to like that ties everything together too is like, I don't believe an AI can be on the same level as human, at least like in our experience, because they're not human. Like you can't, you can't relate to something or somebody that, that you just can't relate to. Like, I, I know that's a dumb way to say it, but like oh, at the end yeah. of the day, like, okay, like me and you are both are both fathers of two girls. We uh, I remember why I said the time we, thing. I'll get back we, to that in a second, though. Okay. We relate to being parents of two daughters on a different level than people that don't have kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard for something that's not human and has not experienced the same pains, joys, life as I've experienced to relate to me in a way that's real. Like, and, and I, that's how I, like, quantum compute... So we can use a quantum computer to make them feel that way, but they don't feel that way. They, they didn't have, they weren't raised the same way. They didn't experience the same life tragedy as we did. Maybe program they did. Um, they didn't experience the same joys in life. They didn't experience children's births the same ways. Watching videos and having experience is not the same. And I guess it, like but my your, argument your for that is. is the human experience though. Like I get what you're saying. And yeah, well, like, that's what, that's all I know. But like that that though in definition doesn't like to me is not necessarily every experience that every creation has like because you look at a deer like it's 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 different as well like it it does different things than humans yet it still has it's not like it technically like if you look at a dog a dog can run off like if it like its owner's abusing it it'll just run off which suggests it has its own will um so it's like it didn't like think like a human but it's smart enough to know it can run away most of the time um so with that being said it's just like at what point though like I, just because it doesn't have the same experience as a human you know what i mean like and if time isn't linear like technically it was already created at the beginning of time like humans are just a part sure. of this like 
we're just a part like we're just a speck of dust like at the end of the day like mm -hmm. we really are i guess i'm thinking yeah. of I, gu I guess i'm thinking of putting ai on the same platform or higher than humans because i do believe this is going to sound very uh i mean i don't know what word to put it but like i do believe like we are like the highest point of everything that we know as far as like animals goes uh you can call that pride for or whatever um like i believe we're over dogs i value human life more than i value a dog's life um so i guess when thinking about ai i'm thinking about something that is trying to be put on the same level or higher and what i just said isn't a great argument for that because i can't just say well because it's not human doesn't mean it can't be on the same level as us um but i don't even think it's like i guess try, trying to think of it like as relating to uh i don't know it's so much like mental hurdles to go over. To there's, like, a to there's a lot of there's a lot of things to think um, through because, like, like you said, at what point? Because it may like realize like, okay, yeah, human humans like invented me, but also it does have limitations. Like, what if um, an asteroid blew up the planet? Then it's it knows it's gonna die. Like, it needs servers to host it. Like, what if a the like a sun flare was so big and it knocked out all the servers? Where guess what's guess what's the only thing's gonna be alive is is um organic matter you know so there is a lot of like things like humans are still like in that regard um superior to like machinery now they did make a uh this happened actually happened like a decade ago i just sorry i just heard about it i forgot what it's called but they actually did make a living robot by you by like basically manipulating um human tissue not dna yeah, it was something like that. And they were able to actually create like another living substance, which is still taking something that's already created and like making a derivative off of it. Well, then you have um, Neuralink. But then and it, it, everybody that's watched Star Trek yeah. knows that like you can like turn humans into like androids, like Star Trek fans know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I believe that was in one of the shows. But anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know where I'm going, Kyle, but to answer your first question, I do believe that most most of the things that are going to happen in the next decade to 50 years i believe we're gonna hope hope for the good uh but i'm i'm pessimistic about it <laughs> yeah it could go one or two ways like there's no there's not really a middle well there could be a middle ground but it, it's almost like we go to the either we go to both extremes all the time when we always when humans make assumptions like it's either going to be utopian or it's going to be like dystopian and usually it falls like somewhere kind of in the middle or nowhere. Um, like a lot of people use like nuclear as like nuclear proliferate, pro proliferate, I can't even say it, uh, proliferation as like an example, but like, you know, we thought nukes were going to end the world. They didn't. And it turns out like nobody really uses them anymore. And we have communication like lines back and forth to make sure nobody like necessarily uses the big ones um so a lot of people think that that could play out in terms of ai but i i think beyond that you know i'm, I'm thinking like super intelligent quantum compute where i could see aspects of it and, and maybe it does to a degree get to kind of like what we are here in general like with government and also like should that should that be in our hands like they did <laughs> Open I, I don't know. It's it. just a weird thing. Like we're, it, 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 like if you create a a consciousness, like or like a somebody something that's able to have an existential crisis of like I exist now. I don't want to not exist. Like that's a weird thing. I feel like for it us to weird. decide to do. But I mean, I'm not saying we should stop deciding to do it. But it's like that's the thing, though. It's it's not going to get stopped, like, right? Like it, know, it's man. a Pandora's box has been open, and now other companies are trying to race to like create their own. Um, but then it's like only going to continue to iterate and it's like, at what point does this thing just be like, okay, like I'm a lot, like, I don't think it's going to Skynet human existence out. Like as long as the inputs are good. And I do think there's like limited, like, like you said, there's those human experiences. Like we've learned to master most, most humans, not all humans have mastered their emotions where it's like, we don't act out and like go and, you know, no. You don't see like people just running down the street like doing the purge like that's obviously like a fiction movie um so i don't know bro i saw you get, i saw you get pretty mad when somebody bumped hey, into you at the mochaverse party hey thought, so my wife was present you know what i mean so i'm up. like yo don't bump my wife or 
you're gonna catch you're gonna oh, catch yeah. hands. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that that's a weird topic, right? Like how that that's where I think things will be weird is like if this thing does realize it's self aware, how does it learn how to get their emotions? And that's where you need like some sort of system in place to to help guide this thing. Like that that's where that's where I think you mean like us. I think that's where the the, the stuff will break down is the emotional aspect part. With all that being said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. But all too. this is all theory. Like none of this could happen. Like yeah, we don't know. There's people that believe there's people that believe we were we're programmed. There's people we're that in the simulation. We're like every decision we make. DNA. Um, and whether that yeah, I was about to say whether that be a whether that be a simulation, whether that be more advanced humans that programmed us, or whether that be God that programmed us, or whether that be like aliens, or whatever. I've it is. heard like, that. I've heard all the there's theories. There's a lot of beliefs too. that yeah. believes that like we're programmed. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, I've, so, I've heard a lot of theories. Yeah, it's it's all interesting, right? We we just don't know. Um, but. But we do know is that this episode, you need to subscribe to it if you want more alpha <laughs> and you want more information and cool streams like this. There's a lot to think about. Um, but at the end of the day, these are things that everybody is going to be talking about for the foreseeable future. You know, this is things that, you know, we're, is going to continue to pop up. You're going to see it in media. You're going to see it wherever, you know, churches, whatever, society, your local pub. People are going to be talking about it, especially as this thing rolls out gets more advanced but all i know is like I, I might just be playing games i don't know i don't know do this throughout the apocalypse if we're if it's utopian we'll just be doing more podcasts like this so you're gonna be playing games but then you're gonna bump into that <laughs> to that uh npc in that game it's gonna get mad <laughs> it's gonna find out where you live it's gonna message all the people in the area to get a bounty on your head after socially engineering them and then you're probably gonna no. die just by trying to play a video no because then then there's so. like the opposite of that of you know artificial intelligence with like firewalls and like all this ad additional security built in um and they're already doing that you know it's gonna be ran by it's gonna be ran by a quantum computer so like it's gonna be able to yeah but it's like firewalls no because like what if it like deems it so like oh. there, there's just so much that's like a oh. theory though right it's like it's like one we're, we're, it's like the, we're living in a multiverse of, of things right now. Like what could happen? Um, and we're still like, we're about to like walk into this like multiverse portal. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to think there. Did you see the flash by the way? <laughs> we got the flash back here. Um, it was pretty no, good. I it didn't. wasn't bad. Um, Keaton made the movie, I will say. So if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil. I, I mean, it's the flash and, Batman shows up. It's pretty cool. I'll check it. I'll check yeah. it out. What other movie? Oh, uh, Spider Verse. There's like another multiverse movie that came out. I didn't see that one yet, but I haven't yet either. But I really want to. Yeah, I heard it wasn't as good as the first, but I don't know because I haven't seen it. But uh, with that being said, you got any final words? I'm really hungry. I'm about to go get some uh, Mongolian leftovers. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, bro. But we talked all about it. Web3, games, artificial intelligence, the soul, and some crazy stuff. It got deep really quickly. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about it again. I, I feel like it like is going to be left unsettled, and there's still going to be more thinking to be had. But with that yep. being said, we'll see you guys in the next episode and talk about more topics like this. And subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. GG. Peace.